What's going on everybody? Long time no see, Super E46 here. And so I've been having some shifting issues and we're gonna see if we can't get this fixed today. So that's first gear. This is the car, you know, uh, engine off, everything. That's the amount of play that you get in first gear. That's quite a bit. I would shift in the other gears, but I've got it on stands and stuff. I just don't wanna take the chance. I'm sure it's fine, but yeah, there's a ton of play in this. There's a ton of play. And basically I'll drive and put it into third, fourth, you name it, but particularly third, it'll go into third and you'll actually see it kick back and forth like that. So it's very, I mean, that's in first gear right now. That's the amount of play. So we're gonna try to get this figured out now. Um, I'm gonna be doing a few reviews. Um, so while I'm getting it figured out, I'm gonna do oil change as well. I went ahead and put this uh, Liquid Molly engine flush in there. Yeah, camera don't want to zoom in, but no worries. But yeah, so this Liquid Molly engine flush. So we're gonna see how that stuff works. Let the car idle for about 15, 20 minutes, and then uh, we're gonna change the oil. I'm also gonna show you guys how to change the oil with that CCV system. But first things first, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do our best to install Gearogistics um, chassis mounted shifter, DSSR, very, very good quality, um, and then the chassis mount shifter. So I ended up going with a carbon shaft. This stuff really isn't my biggest worry for this job. It's going to be this, your um, selector rod joint. So that's apparently pretty hard to get to. We're going to try to get to that first. So let's go ahead and get under the car, see what we've got going on underneath there.
the uh, base clip out, as they say. And they call it that for a reason. That is one tough freaking thing to get out, that's for sure. And so now, <clears throat> we're working on getting the carrier brushing out, which sits right behind here. I'll be honest, that thing's turning out to be freaking harder than anything. So, I really don't know how to get it out. We're just going to have to keep pulling with it. And I got that out. That's because I already have all the other linkage disconnected. And now it's just going to be an issue of somehow getting that damn, that damn carrier brushing out. I have no idea how to do that. I have no idea. I'm going to try going underneath again, giving it a shot. You know, it's going to work. But we shall see. Been better, but I've been worse. Yeah, yeah. The oil change and uh, the shifting's completely done on it. So I'm, really? yeah. So I'm doing this. Uh, crew body Super 46 here. Um, went underneath the car. Unfortunately, there was no light, so I was not able to show you guys what I wanted to show you. Um, so I had to do the job. Got all that stuff taken off. Um, got the new Garagistic chassis mount shifter installed. It's really good quality. But what I'm gonna do is just give you all some tips on the tools you'll need and just some of the you know little things I think are overlooked in some other videos. So first thing you wanna do um, where I left off is you wanna take off this rubber boot. That took me a little bit of time. I can include that in the video. Um, I might, it's really pretty much just me pulling this thing off. The hardest part is getting that lip over there once you do that really the, the key to getting it off is just pulling this up and then you just slide it over top of the shifter it comes out ready to roll um, once you get that out you will actually be able to see through to the shift linkage which is going to be this thing um, and essentially this is held in by two things this is held in by i guess technically three if you're including the selector rod joint but this particular thing is held in by two points You've got your bushing, which is in the back, your carrier bushing, which is this thing right here. And then in the front, 
which is this right here, there's a screw or a bolt rather that goes through this and then a clip, this, this particular thing bolts onto the top of the transmission. This is what it looks like, the whole thing. So this bolt right here, rather this bushing has a bolt that goes through it. You take a flathead screwdriver on what's called the bitch clip, which is gonna be hanging off the left side of the transmission on the top of it. You pop that bitch clip up. Once it comes up, you literally just slide it right out to the left. That's at least how it was on mine. Once it comes out, this thing will be up freely. You then have to turn your view to the back of this, which is gonna be this portion where the carrier bushing is installed, this thing right here. And so what you're gonna actually do when you look to the back, this is gonna be sitting kind of wedged up into these two brackets. You're gonna take a flathead, you're gonna just start to pry that out one piece at a time. This thing will come out and then your shift linkage will be pretty much free to come out except for this part, which is connected to the selector rod joint. And all you need to do there is you take a flathead, pop off a little clip that's on here. That should slide out. I can't remember which direction this was. I, th I honestly can't, but whichever it is, you pop that clip off. There's a clip that goes there and then it comes out. Then your whole shift linkage comes out. And then once that happens, you're free to start installing your new chassis mount shifter. Um, really the biggest tips that I'll give you guys for this job that nobody else talked about is how difficult it was getting this thing out. Uh, FCP Euro made a video of someone doing it and basically he used two flat heads, which I could see how that would work. Didn't work for me because I left the drive shaft on so there was not a whole ton of space. So I took one flat head, pried that down a little bit, went on the other side, pried it down again, and then slowly but surely this thing popped out. Once that did, the whole shift linkage came out after I popped the clip off this, which is your linkage, your selector, I guess you could say. Yeah, I think this is your selector. Your selector rod joint is this thing right here. This is what's not talked about. Look at the inside of that. Completely deteriorated. So a lot of people will just say, oh, I'm going to do chassis mounted and just that'll be good. If you have a stock one of these and it's old and it looks like that, it's not going to be good. The, that's actually when you guys saw early in the video, the side to side play, that's where that was coming from. So definitely get a new one of these. You see that little ledge right there? You have to get this off in order to get that selector rod joint off because the selector rod joint, this thing here, bolts directly into the transmission. Um, and so essentially you have to take a, um, a hook, like a little mini hook. What I used was, I guess you call it a pick. I used this thing here, this little pick. And I was able to slowly but surely pry off that, um, that little circular band thing, this thing, this little clip. This was the hardest part of the job. Doing that bushing and then doing this was the hardest part of the job because if you see, there's not a lot of space there to get a flathead in there. Good luck getting a flathead in there, ladies and gentlemen. Very tight space. I've got a tiny, tiny flathead. Never went in. So uh, use a hook to get that off, and then you should be good. I opted for a Garagistics um, late model chassis mount shifter and, or late model uh, select rod joint, and it all went really well. So... Um, Back to the video, but yeah, I just wanted to give you guys these tips because in case you're going into this job thinking it's going to be a piece of cake, it is not. I can say putting the new stuff on was much easier than taking the old stuff off. So just something to think about, guys. Um, and yeah, this is the final result. That's, some people like how this looks so much, they just leave the boot off and just leave it like that. I decided to actually keep the stock boot i did have to cut it to get it to fit how i wanted it to let's see if i can get this to go in how i did before it's just hard because i'm on the phone too okay there we go so we got that in so that's actually how it looks definitely looks really nice the shifting's great not really much side to side play at all I had a little trouble getting one of Garagistic's bolts in because their clearance is very, very tight. I actually had to go to Home Depot and essentially use a bolt that has a bunch of holes in it and then stick a cotter pin through it. I know it's definitely not ideal, but that's actually how it's running right now. Um, next time I get the car off the ground for like an oil change, I'm going to try to put Garagistic's actual bolt that came with it in. Um, but yeah, I went with the DSSR, all that stuff I showed you guys earlier. 
and the shifting quality is great. It's been on here for a few months now. I've had no issues at all. Um, so yeah, definitely something to think about. But yeah, guys, back to the video. Thanks again. If you have any more questions about how to get all that stuff off, just make sure to comment down below. And yeah, like I said, the bitch clip was not as much of a bitch as everybody makes it out to be. Hands down, I, if you would have told me this was the bitch clip, I would have believed it because this thing was incredibly hard to get off. Incredibly hard. I had to take a pick and slowly but surely basically put the clip or put the pick in, in the middle of this and wedge it in between until I had a little bit of space and you just pull, 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 and then I pulled it off. Not easy at all. But yeah, um, that's pretty much my biggest tips there for that part of the job. Um, aside from that, once you get that clip off, you're good to roll. Now, you don't always have to do a new selector rod joint, but if it's an older car, I definitely recommend it. Like I said, there's supposed to be a foam block in there, and that is completely deteriorated. There was no space at all. That is what hooks in the transmission and selects your gears. So, you know, you have your different selectors and your bushings and your linkage, all that stuff. This is actually what connects directly into the transmission. So once you get that clip off, there's a little cylinder in there. I took the back end of the clip and just pushed the cylinder down. That came out. Boom. Good to roll. Sorry if I was a little fast with this video, guys. I just really wanted to uh, make sure that I did it in time. For some reason, I hadn't been able to... Uh, get everything uploaded but yeah i got a lot of more uh a lot more good content coming um so just make sure you guys like and subscribe stay tuned and as always stay safe drive safe